Hope we'll all stand together to honor the word of God. We'll read from the book of Malachi chapters 1 and we'll read verse 6 to verse 8. Malachi chapters 1 verse 6 to verse 8. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name, and ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon my altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, Is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, Is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor, Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, say the Lord of hosts. Let us pray. Gracious God, we commit this outreach into your hands. Amen. May you bless the hearts that will receive the word. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to speak today on what I have titled... Where is my honor and where is my fear? Two things that God requires from his children. Two things that God requires from his servants. And that is honor and fear. And that is why God is asking questions today. And if we notice the way that Christianity is going today, we will agree with God that this question is relevant even today. Because in the days of Malachi, the people had forgotten about worshipping God with honor, worshipping God with respect, worshipping God with fear in their hearts. And everyone was bringing all kinds of offering, the blind, the lame, the sick, polluted things that were not even acceptable to men were being offered to God and God spoke by the mouth of his prophet Malachi if I am a master where is my honor if I am a father where is my fear and that is what God is asking Christians today particularly the ministers the priests, the pastors, the bishops, the overseers who have turned the house of God into a party time that anybody can worship God any way he or she wants to do it. And we think that everything has to be Americanized. And if it does not sound American, then it is no more acceptable. God is not an American. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. A son honors his father. A servant fears his master. And that is what God wants from us today. Where is my fear? Where is my honor? And any church, any minister, any Christian, any generation that will lose the fear of God, that will lose the honor of God, their worship will be in vain. Their worship will be in vain. They can build all the cathedrals they want to build. They can fill the stadium with human beings. But if the fear of God is absent, that worship is in vain. God demands fear. God demands honor. And every one of us must realize that God is worthy of our honor. God is worthy of our fear. God is worthy of our praise. Glory be to his holy name. In the book of Genesis, we see what the lack of fear of God can do. Genesis chapters 20 
I want you to read with me verse 11. And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely, the fear of God is not in this place. And they will slay me for my wife's sake. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Without the fear of God, man can be more wicked than a viper. Man can be more dangerous than a python. Man can devour more than a lion. Abraham, the faithful man, he recognized that without the fear of God, his life will be in danger. And today, Abraham's fear has been vindicated. Why is the world filled with violence today? Why is the world filled with killings today? Kidnappings today? Because there is no fear of God. Why are the churches filled today with falsehood? False doctrine? False teaching? Why have churches become business centers? Everything is for sale. Prayer is for sale. Water is for sale. Everything is for sale. When Jesus said, freely you receive and freely you shall give. Yeah. Why? Because there is no fear of God in the churches anymore. No fear of God in the country anymore. And that is why people kill and they steal and they destroy. And there is no guilt in their heart. Why? There is no fear of God. And God is asking today, where is my fear? What have we done with the fear of God? And I want the ministers to get ready to answer. For God will ask the priests again, the pastors, the evangelists, the bishops, where is my fear? Where is the honor of God? Why are women today dressing in such a way to make men sin? And the Bible says, if a man looks at a woman and lusts after her, he has sinned in his heart. And the women deliberately strip themselves naked. Not only on the street, right inside the church. You see them come inside the church naked, almost naked. Why do women put on men's dresses today? Wearing trousers, just like men. When they know that God said it is an abomination for a woman to dress like a man. Yeah. Why would a woman do that? Why? She has lost the fear of God. She has lost the honor of God. She has lost everything that, that reverences God in her heart. So she can do whatever she likes. And she comes to church like that and the pastor says nothing against it. The bishop says nothing against it. God will ask the bishops. God will ask the pastors. God will ask the priests again. What did you do with my fear? What did you do with my honor? Why would men dress like women today? So many men plait their hair like women today. So many men perforate their ears and put on rings in their ears. So many men dress with women dresses today. Why? They had lost the fear of God. And that is why everywhere is filled with violence. Women today. So many men perforate their ears and put on rings in their ears. So many men dress with women dresses today. Why? They had lost the fear of God. And that is why everywhere is filled with violence, wickedness, corruption, everything evil. Why? Men and women have lost the fear of God. <laughs> and I adjure you today, seek for that fear. Amen. Seek the fear of God. Amen. Seek the honor of God. Amen. For there is a reward for those that fear God. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. Look at human sacrifices today. 
Men want to get into posts and into offices of authority. Men want to be rulers and they have to sacrifice their fellow human beings to get into the post of authority. They have to kidnap children. They have to kill pregnant women. Why would a man do such a thing? Because that man has lost the fear of God. What happened to thou shall not kill? God said thou shall not kill. But men kill today with that condemnation in their hearts. Why? They lost the fear of God. And the priest says nothing against that. The bishop says nothing against that. But God is asking today, Oh, ye priests, where is my honor? And I want all the preachers in Nigeria, and all the bishops in Nigeria, and all the evangelists in Nigeria, to know that God will require his fear and his honor from their hands on the day of judgment. Yeah. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. Turn with me quickly to the book of Psalms, chapter 36. And we want to read verse 1 to 4. 36, 1 to 4. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He had left off to be wise and to do good. He devised mischief upon his bed. He set himself in a way that is not good. He abhorred not evil. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that there are some people in the Bible described as wicked. And such are those that say in their own hearts there is no God. And because they have lost the presence of God, that reverence, that fear, that honor, that makes a man different from a beast, they lost it. And when you take God out of your program, God will give you a reprobate heart. And you will begin to do those things that are not even beneficial to you. And today the worship of God has become like a party. People just come together and drink and dance and eat and jump up and down. And nobody cares about the rules and regulations that God has set out in the Holy Scriptures to worship Him. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. God cannot be mocked. What a man sows, that he must also reap. God is asking today, where is my honor? Where is my fear? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God makes a man depart from evil. But today, there's so much evil in the land, so much evil in the churches, so much evil in the nation. Why? Men have lost the fear of God. And all we think about today is how to get rich, how to get richer, how to make money, how to make more money. And nobody talks about judgment. Nobody talks about hell. Nobody talks about the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Nobody talks about the second coming of Jesus Christ. All we hear the preacher say, God will bless you. God will prosper you. God will prosper you. I believe in God's prosperity. But if you don't repent of your sins, you will surely die. Yeah. We've got to pray to God to return the fear of God in the hearts of his children. Amen. For without the fear of God, you cannot worship God acceptably. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Alright, I'd like to read the scriptures here. The book of Psalms chapter 5. And I want to read verse 7. Psalms chapter 5 and verse 7. 
But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Amen. David, a man after God's own heart, he gives, gives us the recipe of acceptable worship. David says, I will come before the Lord and I will be aware of the multitude of his mercies. But I will worship God in the fear of the Lord. Amen. David was a great king. David never lost a war. No enemy rose against David and conquered David. David conquered every war. God gave him victory every time. And yet he never, out of pride and arrogance, lost the fear of God. David says, in thy fear will I worship. Every true worshiper must be conscious that God is almighty. Must be conscious that God has power to raise up and to bring down. God has power to kill and to make alive. God has almighty powers. And that should make any worshiper come before God with reverence, with honor, and with fear. It says a servant honors his master. A son honors his father. And a servant fears his master. If God is our father, where is his honor? If God is our master, how much do we fear him? Our churches today have relegated the fear of God to the background. And nobody hears about the fear of God anymore. Nobody preaches about those things that we know that brings about the fear of God in the heart of God's children. We don't hear them anymore. It has become commercial preaching. Advertisement of prosperity. But let me tell you, saints, the scripture says, the soul that sitteth it shall die. And that scripture is still perfectly true. Amen. Let me tell you, saints, you women, I don't care what your pastors tell you. If you dress like a man, you are an abomination before God. Amen. And you men, I don't care what your bishops tell you. If you dress like a woman, you are an abomination before God. Amen. A man should dress like a man and a woman should dress like a woman and that shows you the fear of God in the heart of the worshiper. Amen. Blessed be the name of our God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap off for everybody. Amen. Our God is good. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn with me quickly to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapters 1. And I want to read verse 24. Proverbs chapters 1, verse 24. Because I have called and ye refused, <clears throat> I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have set at naught all my counsel. And with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as a desolation. And your destruction cometh as a wild wind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early. But they shall not find me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. God is stretching his hands right now. And God knows that we are men. And from time to time we have one calamity or the other. From time to time we have one problem or the other. Especially you women. You need God more than anybody else. Women too. We need God so much. That we can't do without God. 
And God says, if you despise my counsel, if you reject to answer when I call, there will come your own day when you call and I will not answer. And God cannot lie. Amen. There will come a day when God will be the only solution to your problem. And because you are the woman that wears trousers, why? You make nonsense of God's counsel. And you are men who will not regard the counsel of God. The day your fear will come upon you and all your money has failed and all your wisdom has failed and all your friends have failed and you turn to God and God says, I will not answer you. What will you do then? You disregard God's counsel today. The day will come when you call him and he will remember that you disregarded his fear in verse in the last verse we read verse 29 for they for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the lord that's it you will call and he will not answer why you hated knowledge not the knowledge of algebra or mathematics or those worldly knowledge but you hated the knowledge of God. You refused to choose the fear of the Lord. And when you call, he says, I will not hear you. No wonder why so many people say, well, I prayed and prayed and prayed. And God never heard me. Of course. He already said that. He said he will not hear you. Because you choose not to fear him. You choose not to take his advice. You choose not to regard his counsel. You choose not to take the knowledge of God into your hearts. You choose not to allow the word of God to rule your decisions. You did not choose the fear of God. And that is the basis upon which God will allow your calamities and your fear to befall you. And overtake you. And overthrow you. Why? You did not answer when he called. You want to answer God now? Say amen. amen. And God will answer you when you call. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. In the book of Proverbs chapter 14, quickly. Chapter 14. And I want to read verse 26 and 27. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Amen. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life Amen. to depart from the snares of what? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible encourages God's children. The word of God blesses us here. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children will have what a refuge hallelujah we have a refuge we have a refuge our refuge is in what the fear of god when we have the fear of god the bible says we have a place we can run into when our calamities come upon us because we have the fear of God. Because we chose the fear of God. We have a refuge where we can hide and the calamities will pass over. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In Egypt, God told Moses, tonight I will pass through the land. And I will kill all the firstborn in Egypt. Put the blood on the doorpost. And when I see the blood, I'll do what? Wow. I'll pass over you. Yeah. I will come, but I will not enter. Yeah. I will do what? Wow. I'll go to the next person who does not have blood and pour my anger upon them. Yeah. Why will God not enter the house that has blood? They chose the fear of God. Yeah. The fear of God that is strong confidence. You are not afraid. 
that the devil will do you this that witches will do you that that wizards will do you that the bible says even if you eat a deadly thing it shall not hurt you because you have confidence strong confidence that you have the fear of god you have the honor of god and god will take care of your calamities hallelujah in verse 27 it says the fear of the lord is a fountain of life what does that mean eternal life life that has no end life that has no beginning the fear of god is what fountain of life it gives you life upon your life upon your life upon your life jesus said because i live you shall live also Amen. hallelujah Amen. because you have the fear of god and he says we are passed from death to life i want to know how many of you today that will stretch out and receive the hand of God. He says, because I stretched my hand and you did not receive it. Because I called and you did not answer. In the day of your calamity, you will call and I will not answer. But for God's children, he says, the fear of God is a fountain of life. The fear of God is strong confidence and the children of god find what refuge yeah. you hide in god yeah. and when your calamities come god will turn them over yeah. they will not come close to you yeah. because you have chosen the fear of god yeah. and anyone today that has chosen the fear of god stand on your feet and just give god praise and give him thanks for giving you the privilege this morning to hear his word to receive the hand that god has stretched forward towards you to receive the counsel that God has sent to you. Don't reject God's counsel. If you reject God's counsel, he will reject your prayers. You receive God's counsel, he will receive your prayers. So call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he has done unto the Lord be the glory great things he had done i want you to pray and give god praise and give him glory and call upon his name tell him you have received his counsel you have received his counsel you have received his counsel may he hear your prayer on your day of calamity when you call upon his name may he be quick to hear you Lord be the glory, great things he had done unto Jesus. Be the glory, great things he had done unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he had done. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Be the glory, great things God has done unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things He has done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unto Jesus we give glory, great things God has done. Unto Jesus we give glory, great things he had done. Hallelujah. Jesus, I give glory, great things God has done. Unto Jesus, I give glory, great things He had done.
unto the Lord, we give glory, great things he had done. Unto the Lord, we give glory, great things God has done. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord. We'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. May your word that has gone forth not come back void. Lord, may it find a resting place in the house of your children here and those that shall hear it through the media. Lord, may the fear of our God come back to our hearts. May we worship the Lord in the fear of the Lord. May we find refuge in the fear of the Lord. May it become a fountain of life in our hearts. Lord Jesus, I rededicate your children, each and every one today, that we might find mercy, that we might find grace in thy sight. May we also drink from that fountain of life. Bless each and every one today, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to our God. God bless you. We are going to have another one in, a, uh, in about 10 minutes. That might be touched and that burn with fire. Now unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words. Which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure that which was commanded and if so much as a beast touch the mountain if taken from the book of hebrews chapters 12 if we'll all stand to reverence the word of god hebrews chapters 12 reading from verse 18 for ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burn with fire nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure that which was commanded and if so much as a beast touched the mountain it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart and so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quick. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel Amen. gracious God we are thankful again thank you for the scriptures thank you for the Holy Spirit thank you for going to the cross of Calvary in our place bless and anoint your children give us understanding and wisdom Break for us the bread of life. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Amen. Today I want to show you something that you may probably have never seen since you read this portion of the scriptures. Because God anoints and reveals his word in due season. Amen. And that's why he says, blessed is that servant that will feed the, the sheep with the right food in the right season. Amen. Blessed be the name of our God. Amen. What we read here is just as fearful as it's described. Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai 
we are going to look at two mounts here Mount Zion and Mount Sinai and I want you to follow as we go so you can see things that will happen to us as pilgrims as we journey along life's journey going to the day of the Lord and the coming of Christ or the rapture of the saints if you want to know what God will do look at what he has done before because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Mount Sinai represents the horror that awaits the careless and unbelieving pilgrim. Mount Sinai represents the horror the terrible fear the terrible experience that a careless and fearless pilgrim will experience in his journey in life what we have just read in hebrews chapters 12 and verse 18 for ye are not come unto mount, the mount that might be touched or, and that burn with fire nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore Moses said the experience was so fearful that Moses himself did not only fear but he quaked do you know what it is to quake moses a man like moses conqueror of egypt quaked at the sight that they saw on mount sinai why did god do that we have just spoken previously on where is my fear where is my honor and I want to follow that with this message today Mount Sinai and Mount Zion the experiences of pilgrims I don't know what you're going to experience in your life journey if you will experience Mount Sinai or you will experience Mount Zion because there are two of them glory be to our God Amen. Mount Sinai the quaking and the burning and the tempest and the lightning and the blackness and the darkness that Moses saw and the whole of the church with him and they quaked with fear was a warning God was warning his church because they had come to the point where they were almost losing their respect for Moses and their fear of God because they thought they are out of Egypt, they can no more see Pharaoh, they can no more see the taskmasters, they have crossed the Red Sea, and so they are free men. And because they are free, they can do whatsoever they wanted. Freedom without control can be more dangerous than bondage. Because if you think you're free, and I think I'm free, then I can destroy you and you can destroy me because we're all free. Freedom has a limit. Amen. Amen. God set his church free from serving Pharaoh to serve God. Amen. If there is no control over your freedom, then that is not freedom. See, so God was warning the careless pilgrim. Some Christians today believe that they are saved. Because they heard the scripture said, when the Son of Man set you free, you are free indeed. So the women think they are free to wear trousers. And the men think they are free to wear skirt and blouse. And everybody is free to do whatever they want. And nobody cares about the mind of God. Nobody cares about what the scripture says. Nobody cares about the standard of God anymore. And the Bible says, if the love of this world is in you, then the love of God is not in you. No one cares about that anymore. The world is copying, the church is copying the world. And the world is copying the church. And there's no difference anymore. The church in the wilderness 
led by Moses, came to that point when they will go to feast and to drink at Belpar with unbelievers and worship their idols and marry their women and they don't care about Moses and they don't care about God and God sent down a judgment that put so many of them to death and God had to reveal terror terror from heaven and they saw darkness they saw blackness they saw tempest they had thunders they had voices they don't see who is speaking but the voices and the words that they heard was so terrible that they said we don't want to hear it anymore today you hear god's word and you say amen, amen. but those men they heard the word of god and they ran to hide themselves they were scared to death when they saw the quaking and the shaking of the mountain when they saw the burning fire lit not by man's hands but by the power of god the mountain was on fire and there was quaking and there was earthquake everywhere and there was blackness all of a sudden there was darkness all of a sudden and the voices came and trumpets sounded and they could see no one blowing the trumpet and they were scared to death moses the man of god was so scared that he was quaking with fear and no one could help no one that is the god you worship and anyone today that will take away the fear of God from his heart cannot worship the Almighty God for God is not an idol God is not a carved image God is not a story God is not a myth God is God maker of man and God made man for the ultimate reason of worshiping him worship God with the fear of God in your heart you take away the fear of God in your heart and then you can do whatever you want but if the fear of God is in your heart you will only do the will of God amen. can the church say amen? amen it was a warning to the proud and those that despise God's word those that were indifferent those that change their minds today and tomorrow they change their minds again oh i'm ready to go out of egypt moses let's go the next day oh let's go back to egypt let's go back to egypt that was a warning by that terrible sight the proud and careless pilgrim is warned by god i can consume you in a minute either by fire or by this tempest you see or by this blackness you see or by this darkness you see i can consume you in a second and that was such the voice the words that they heard was so terrible that they entreated that they didn't want to hear it anymore moses please we don't want to hear it anymore what was it that the ear heard and begged never to hear it again it was a warning God came down on Mount Sinai to warn the careless pilgrim. The pilgrim that has lost the fear of God. That has lost the honor of God. The proud, the careless pilgrim. The one that won't change his mind once and for all. God came down and showed to them, I can consume you in one minute and moses feared moses quaked this was not pharaoh coming this was not the jebusites coming this was not the philistines coming this was god against his church moses said i feared and i quaked terribly that is the god today that women wear trousers and stand in the church and sing the god the fellow god god cannot be mocked Amen. when you finish mockery you go to hell Amen. any woman that moses said i feared and i quaked terribly that is the god today that women wear trousers and stand in the church and sing the god the fellow god god cannot be mocked Amen. when you finish that mockery you go to hell
Any woman that puts on a man's dress is an abomination. Any man that dresses like a woman, you are an abomination. That's thus says the Lord. I don't care what your church says. That's what God said. And God cannot change. Hallelujah. Mount Sinai is a demonstration of what the pilgrim who is who in freedom have lost the fear of God. That's what you should expect. Mount Sinai. There, God demonstrated what the pilgrim, any saved soul that has become careless and thinks that there is no more fear of God, there's no more honor of God, there's no more respect for God's institution. There's no more respect for God's servants. There's no more respect for the Holy Bible. There's no more respect for prayers. There's no more respect for going to church or having fellowship. Because the world said so. God came down and demonstrated on Mount Sinai what the careless pilgrim should expect. God demonstrated, I came down in Egypt and delivered you by destroying the power of Egypt. I can do it again. I don't know how many of us here would like to experience Mount Sinai before we begin to fear God. How many of you will want God to come down and shake you to your roots and take away everything you have like Job? and strip you naked and shake you till you know that the God of heaven rules in the kingdom of men. Today we have churches who have lost the fear of God. Lost respect for God. Lost respect for the, for the word of God. And they are teaching men the same thing. And people go to church today just as a a Sunday, Sunday ceremony or ritual. People go to church today not because they love God, not because they know it is their duty to worship God. People go to church today for two reasons. One is to be healed. Because they are sick. And they don't want this sickness anymore. And I've tried everywhere. And the sickness is not leaving them. So they know God has power. Well, let me go and see if God can do it. And here they come. And somebody pour some oil on them. And pour some water on them. And scream on top of his voice. And possibly push them down. And they go back home unsaved. Others come to church. Not because they love God. Not because they want to worship the Lord the rest of their days. Is because they heard that somebody can prophesy prosperity. And the lazy men who don't want to walk, they think by somebody saying, God says the Lord, God will give you two million dollars. Then two million will drop from the sky. Both you and your pastor are liars. And every liar will go to hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't go to church because we want to be healed. We don't go to church because we want to be prosperous. We don't go to church because we want to show fine dresses. We go to church because it's a duty. If God heal you or God don't heal you, you're supposed to worship God. If God prosper you and God don't prosper you, you're supposed to worship God. Hallelujah. You are supposed to worship God. That's the whole duty of man. To worship his maker. Healing is for you. God's blessings are for you. Why should you worry about it? It belongs to you after all. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The unbeliever. The word of God is like an object. Listen. Painfully piercing into his heart. To an unbeliever. To a careless pilgrim. To a pilgrim that has lost the fear of God. The word of God is like a dagger. It's like an object. Struck into his heart. And it's piercing into the heart. 
He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear it. Why? He is not of the truth. If you are of the truth, you will hear the word of God. If you are not of the truth, you go to where they entertain you for one hour and empty your pocket, promising you heaven here on earth. Jesus never told us that. This world will burn with fire. And those that have Christ in their lives, they will be transformed in a twinkle of an eye. And those that are dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be changed in a twinkle of an eye. And together we shall go to meet the Lord in the air. Glory be to his holy name. Hallelujah. For the unbeliever, to the careless pilgrim, the word of God pierces his heart. He doesn't want to hear it. Why? It is a condemnation to him. Mount Sinai was the place where God demonstrated what the experience and the expectation of a careless pilgrim will be. If God has saved you from the world, he saved you to serve him. Amen. And if you forget about serving God, he will bring you to Mount Sinai where you will see the power of God. Where he will quake you and shake you and you will see blackness and darkness and, uh, 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 and trumpets and words that you cannot bear. Then you will fall down and worship your maker. I pray you don't get to that point. Amen. Glory be to his holy name. It's a condemnation to the careless pilgrim. In verse 18, I want you to look at verse 18 once more. Hebrews 12 and 18. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This was their experience. And Paul is saying that you and I have not come to this mountain. We have not experienced such a thing. But this is what they experienced. Because they came to the point where they were grumbling and they were murmuring and they were complaining of all kinds of things. And God did not like it. So because God did not like their way of worship, he gave them an experience that will make them afraid so that they can worship God with all their heart. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? Blessed be his holy name. Alright. Go down to verse uh, I want to read verse um, Exodus here. Exodus chapter 20. Quickly. Exodus chapter 20. And I want to read verse 12. Are we there? These are the words that they heard. These are the words that they heard. And they said, we don't want to hear it anymore. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not be a false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, <coughs> nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us. We will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your eyes, faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. 
an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings thy sheep and thy oxen in all places where i record my name i will come unto thee and i will bless thee amen amen, amen. amen. here was the voice that they had holy commandments coming down from god and they could not bear it they could not stand it and they said moses go and hear from god come and tell us there are so many of us today who by our actions are saying the same thing they can't honor their father or their mother they can't do things scriptural way they are proud in their own eyes and when the word of god starts coming they can't bear it they can't accept it they can't take it they can't just change their minds amen and here god moses says god has come down not to destroy you but that is fear may be in your faces that is fear may be in your heart and this is trying to remind us that god has a warning for those of us who have not come to the mount that born with fire that quaked and covered with blackness and darkness and thundering which was an experience that god gave to some careless people he brought out of egypt that will not worship him according to his love upon them he decided to give them laws abraham had no law the law came by moses why did the law come because the people will not worship god under god's love god demonstrated love by sending moses to bring them out of egypt and when they came out of egypt they ignored god and ignored moses and god said to moses step out from them and i kill them all and moses said god have mercy and that's what jesus has done for you and me god would have killed all of us but jesus stood in our place and today we want to worship god not because of prosperity not because of healing not because of any other earthly gain we worship God because he is God Amen. we worship God because we are his children Amen. and in the fear of God shall we worship God Amen. that he will not bring us to the place of bitter experience Amen. hallelujah Amen. glory be to his holy name hallelujah. worship God with all your heart Amen. and God will bless you Amen. and God will save you Amen. and God will prosper you Amen. according to his promises Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. Let's stand together and give God praise. And today we read again from Hebrews chapter 12, this time verse 22 to 29. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refuse him that spake on earth, which more, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only but also heaven and this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaking as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain <coughs> wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with what reverence and godly fear for god for our god is a consuming fire may god bless you you may be seated praise the lord 
last message we were looking at what God had kept in store for the careless pilgrim the fearful horror that Moses with all his powers feared and quaked that darkness and blackness and burning fire was simply an example of hell that was what it was all about because hell will be blackness and darkness and burning flames it's going to be terrible but today we want to see what God has reserved for the careful pilgrim that worships God with joy with godly fear with reverence hallelujah Amen. we are not going to Mount Sinai the place of terror the place of horror the place of darkness and blackness we are going to a different place entirely Amen. glory be to his holy name the Bible says we have come to Mount Zion Zion is different from Sinai Sinai is a place of horror a place of fear a place where the people hear the voice and don't want to hear it anymore Mount Zion is the city of the living God and that is where the pilgrim that worships God with reverence with godly fear that's what awaits you Jesus said behold I go and prepare a place for you I will come back and take you to myself so that where I am there you will be also the Bible says Jesus is light and in him there is no darkness at all children of God are not going into darkness and blackness we are going into that city where the light in that city is Christ himself we will not need the sun we will not need nepa we will not need torchlight because the lamb will be the light Amen. there will be no darkness there Amen. there will be no night there Amen. there will be no morning there Amen. there will be no afternoon there Amen. the day will be bright Amen. forever and ever and ever Amen. for the lamb will be the light Amen. blessed be his glorious name hallelujah Amen. so worship God with fear with godly fear with reverence for we are going to a place prepared for such people amen, amen. Mount Zion signifies the place of the believer who have kept the love of God the fear of God in his or her heart the believer who left Egypt and did not cross the Red Sea and forget all that God did in Egypt to bring him out the believer who still remembers that something had to die in Egypt for him to be released to go the believer who always remembered that there was power demonstrated on his behalf before he could be let loose to go out of Egypt the believer who has seen the power of God not one time not two times but ten times and also came to the Red Sea and saw the power of God divide the sea and he walked on dry ground the believer who will keep that in his heart and not take it and throw it away and allow the experiences of the manifestation of God's presence to lead him in his worship the God who did this he can do it again Amen. there is a place for such a believer Amen. Mount Zion the city of the living God that is where the general assembly of the saints will meet Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing will terrify us there. Amen. Nobody will say, I don't want to hear it anymore. Nobody will say, Moses, go and hear. Come and tell us. No. It will be a wonderful regathering of the family of God. Amen. If you want to be there, give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mount Zion is described as the city of the living God. Amen. Not any dead gods, but the living God. Amen. The living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. Where we will have the company of angels that cannot be counted. Amen. Innumerable. Not one single angel appeared in the blackness and darkness and horror of Mount Sinai. Because that was the symbol of hell. The reckless believer was shown hell. You don't worship God with fear. That's what awaits you. And they don't want to enter there. They, could, they couldn't even come close. But Mount Sinai is... A, Mount Zion is the city of God. Amen. Where the angels of God will meet with us again. Amen. Because they are our brothers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the angel came to John... To reveal the revelation John was about to worship him and he said see you don't do it he said worship God for I am your fellow servant Amen. hallelujah Amen. blessed be the name of our God hallelujah. you find here that the city of God is reserved for somebody who is that person amen, amen. that man that worships God with fear that man will that will reflect the glory of God in his dressing in what he eats in what he drinks in the places he goes in the society he joins that man that will reflect the glory of God in his business that man that will reflect the glory of God in everything he does that man that will apply the fear of God in his programs and in his decision. For that is the worship of God. Amen. You put God first in everything you do. Then Mount Zion is reserved for you. Amen. 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 Who is it reserved for? For that woman who will overcome the madness of this generation. You see the way women dress nowadays? They tie up themselves so tight, just like moi moi, so that everybody sees their front and back, as if they're the only people that has everything. That is the spirit of this age. And we are supposed to be conquerors. We are supposed to be overcomers. Amen. Mount Zion is reserved for that woman that will overcome that devilishism of dressing half naked that woman that will overcome dressing like a woman like a man rather that woman that will dress like a woman in this day and in this age that woman that will overcome the madness of painting from here to there that woman that will overcome the madness of frying her hair until it is burnt God says your hair is your glory Amen. don't fry it like a cara Amen. allow your hair to grow out Amen. that's the glory that God gave to a woman Amen. hallelujah Mount Zion is for you Amen. blessed be his holy name Amen. that woman that will reflect the glory of God in her dressing not a woman that will want to buy a shoe with six or twelve feet heel. And when she's walking, she's walking like that. And she knows it's not good for her. And she wears it. That woman that will overcome sewing a dress and tear it from here to there. And she's naked on the road. That woman that will use one cloth to sew skirt and blouse. And when the wind blows, she has to hold her body when she's walking on the road. That is not a Christian woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mount 
Zion is for the church of the firstborn. Amen. Church of the firstborn. Amen. Where you will have the company of innumerable angels. Amen. Where you will have uncountable angels Amen. coming to fellowship with us. Amen. Coming to sing praises and worship God with us. Amen. Let me tell you, angels can sing. Amen. Angels can sing. Amen. When Jesus was born in the manger, what happened? Angels came down from heaven. And the cloud was filled with them. And they brought good news. And there was singing going on. Even in heaven there are choirs. Singing the glory of God. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Blessed be his holy name. Mount Zion is reserved for you. Amen. You who will retain the honor of God Amen. in all your programs, in all your decisions. Amen. You honor God. You fear God because it's your father. Amen. Because it's your master. Amen. Jesus said, you all are brothers. You have only one master. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If he's our master, that we must fear him. Amen. Jesus said pray like this. Our father. He never said my father. He said our. That includes you and I. Amen. If we have a father. Who is in heaven. We have to hallow his name. Amen. We must reverence him. Amen. And he loves that above anything else. Mount Zion. Is reserved for those that shall overcome this generation. Blessed be his holy name. Mount Zion is reserved for the preachers, for the pastors, for the bishops, for the evangelists that will overcome the temptation of today to put the word of God in their pocket and preach money, money, money. Money cannot save anybody. Oh, Amen. Amen. In the days of the apostles, somebody brought a lot of money to, the, to, the, to Peter the apostle and he wanted to buy the power of the Holy Ghost. And Peter said, let your money perish with you. Amen. How many pastors can say that today? They take in money no matter where it comes from. If it comes from God, they say amen. If it comes from the devil, they say amen. There are some money that the church must not receive. Because there are some type of money God hates. Money gotten from prostitution. And money gotten from selling dogs. God hates that. And you know a dog is a prostitute. And a prostitute is a dog. That's the scriptures. God hates their money. Not to talk about money stolen. For God says, thou shalt not steal. Amen. Amen. So you find that pastors and teachers and evangelists and apostles of today and bishops of today have been anointed by the same spirit that has taken them away from the word of God that brings salvation to preaching commercial and entertainment that brings money. Rather than the souls of men be saved, they prefer that their bank account swell up. I'd rather have Jesus Amen. than silver or gold. Amen. I'd rather have Jesus Amen. than anything else Amen. this world can give. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody know that song? I'd rather have Jesus. Mount Zion. The city of the living God is reserved for that pastor, for that preacher who will overcome the temptation and the anointing of this generation. For the Bible says, a strong delusion will come upon this world in the last days. And men and women will believe a lie and they will be damned by it. Before the church believes a lie, a preacher must preach a lie. And 
we have so much liars today so many preachers preaching lies preaching lies prophesying lies and people are believing lies and they'll be damned by it god cannot be mocked Amen. there's a voice in the wilderness Amen. he says return to god Amen. before it's too late Amen. glory be to his name Amen. hebrews chapter 12 Look at verse 23. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. What does that mean? General assembly. General assembly. The general assembly is the rapture. <laughs> When all the saints of God who have worshipped God since the world began, dead or alive, will all together by the power of God be resurrected and changed in the twinkle of an eye and together will gather in one large assembly. It will not be two or three times. One time and nobody goes before the other. Hallelujah. Amen. In this assembly, some of you came before others came. But in this assembly, it will not be so. Amen. The living cannot go before the dead. The dead cannot go before the living. Amen. God is not partial. Amen. He will raise the dead. Amen. He will change the living. Amen. And his power will take us all together. Amen. In the general assembly of the saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. One of these days there will be a general assembly. Amen. And all our fasting and all our prayers and all the sorrows of this earth will be over. Amen. Blessed be his name. It's the, the church of the firstborn will be meeting. Not St. Monica's church. Not St. Anthony's church. Not St. Priscilla. Not Saint John, you know John is my name. No Saint uh, somebody. It will be the Church of the Firstborn. Amen. There's no name of any church there. So this church is a spiritual body, Amen. and the Bible says God knows those who are His. God knows those that belong to Him. You go to church and you belong to a bunny. God knows. You go to church and you're a witch. God knows. You go to church and you're a wizard. God knows. God knows those that belong to him. And by one baptism. By one baptism. All that belong to God are baptized into one body. And that is the church of the first born. Who is the first born? Christ. First begotten of the father. He has a church. He said, I will build my church. I will build my church. Christ is the firstborn. Yeah. Church of the firstborn. Yeah. Christ is the firstborn. Yeah. He has a church. Yeah. And only the church of Jesus Christ, yeah. baptized by the Holy Ghost into Jesus Christ, yeah. will be having this general assembly. Yeah. Every other church will be this.